What is happening now is nothing short of a return to the Alliance's conceptual priorities from 73 years ago. Nothing has changed. NATO is determined to keep the Russians out, while the Americans dream of keeping not only the Germans, but the whole of Europe, down, and have in fact already enslaved the entire European Union. This philosophy of domination and unilateral advantages has not gone anywhere when the Cold War ended. Over the time since the bloc was created, NATO has hardly been able to present a single real success story that would be to its credit. The alliance brings devastation and suffering to those outside it. I have already mentioned its aggressions against Serbia and Libya, which led to the destruction of Libyan statehood. Iraq got added to the mix. Let's also recall the latest example, Afghanistan, where the alliance unsuccessfully struggled to instill its version of democracy for 20 years. Security problems in the Serbian province of Kosovo have never been resolved, although NATO has been present there for more than two decades as well, and this fact is also telling. Speaking of the U.S. peacekeeping capabilities, look at how many decades the Americans have been trying to restore order in Haiti, which is a small country under their control. It is not Europe. There are numerous examples like this outside the European continent. In 1991, NATO included 16 countries, now it has 30 members. Sweden and Finland are one step away from joining. The alliance deploys its forces and military infrastructure ever closer to our borders, constantly building up its potential and capabilities, moving them towards Russia. They conduct maneuvers and actually openly declare our country the adversary during exercises. NATO is intensifying its activities in the post-Soviet space. At the same time, it is laying claims to the Indo-Pacific region, and now also to Central Asia. All these aspirations to global domination are a direct and flagrant violation of the 2010 Lisbon Declaration, which was signed by all presidents and prime ministers of the North Atlantic bloc. Until recently, we did everything in our power to prevent a further deterioration in the Euro-Atlantic region. In December 2021, President Vladimir Putin made new proposals on security guarantees, a draft treaty between Russia and the US and a draft treaty between Russia and NATO. In this situation, seeing how determined the West was to drag Ukraine into NATO, it was an obvious red line for the Russian Federation, which the West had known about for years, we suggested that the alliance stops expanding and wanted to reach an agreement on concrete, legally binding security guarantees for Ukraine, the Russian Federation, all European countries and all OSCE member states. The attempt to begin a discussion failed. We received the same response to all our calls to approach the situation in a comprehensive and creative way, that each country, and Ukraine first of all, has the right to join NATO and nobody can do anything about it. All components of a compromise formula about the indivisibility of security, that it should not be achieved at the expense of the security of other countries and that one organization should not claim dominion in Europe, all of them were simply ignored. In December 2021, Washington preferred not to take advantage of the opportunity for a de-escalation. 
And it was not only the United States, but also the OSCE, that could have facilitated a de-escalation of tensions if it had been able to settle the crisis in Ukraine based on the Minsk package of measures, which was agreed upon in February 2015 and unanimously approved by the UN Security Council resolution that same month. 